Hi friends, it's Monica and let's talk about the Green Bone Saga series by Fonda Lee. So today's video is another review video and I'm so excited to get into this series and talk about it because I just finished the last book and it was so so good. This series has three books in it, the first one being Jade City, the second one is Jade War, and the last and final one is Jade Legacy. A quick summary, Jade City is about two crime syndicates who have control of the island known as Kekon. We are following the Cole family who have green bones among their ranks, who are actually supernaturally gifted warriors who are powered by Jade. But the Calls and their rivals are at odds with each other and a clan war is on the horizon. First, I do want to go over my overall reading experience. This trilogy is one that will take you on such an intense journey of martial arts action, politics, and heartbreak. Fonda Lee truly immerses you into this world that she crafted and her writing is really easy to read. There are multiple points of views, but I did personally like the points of views of the Call family, which I will get into. They were the best. I would say the pacing is quite consistent throughout the series with a slower beginning in each installment and then that's interspersed with explosive events that will shock you. We are actually set in an urban fantasy world and this type of world is not one that I like in fantasy books but I feel like Fadali did a great job at blending technology with cars, guns, really well with a supernatural element which was Jade and it wasn't over jarring and it really flowed well together. Also within the clan itself, I really enjoyed the structure that they had. So they have three main people that are in charge. We have the leader known as the pillar, then we have the business head which is known as the weatherman, and we have the crime head known as the horn. So it was really nice to see the dynamics play out between how the clan approaches certain issues with either diplomacy and discussions and talks versus more so the crime side which would be with violence. So I really like that balancing act that they had going on. And talking about the clans, I really loved the building tension in the first book between the two clans. There is the mountain clan which is our enemies and we have the low peak clan that has the call family members. There were many small skirmishes and betrayals between the two clans and you really don't know who to trust and who might betray our main character so I really did love that aspect. With each book we see how the world expands especially with introduction of international countries and that adds to the political tensions with who controls Jade and also maybe impending international wars or conflicts that might arise. However, in book one, Jade City, we do focus on the clan war that we are introduced to on the island of Kekon. So in Jade City, we are quite contained on the island. There are mentions of like other countries that are expanded on in books two and three. And moving on to the characters, let's just say these characters you will love and you will care for them very much. Of course, I'm going to be diving into the Call family which are the main characters and we have points of views from each of these characters I'm going to be mentioning. And we see how within the family there are complex dynamics and sibling rivalries. First up, we have the eldest brother, Lan, and he's a new pillar or leader of the clan. I would say Lan is determined to do right by the clan and tries his best to be confident with his choices as a new pillar and I really do like him and his love for his family. Then we have the middle sibling Hilo, he is the horn and he's basically responsible for the criminal side of the clan. When we first meet Hilo, he is very young and ambitious and a little bit hot-headed. And he has difficulty trying to fit into many different roles that is required of him. And I gotta admit, he is <laughs> my favorite character in the entire book series. And he can be a little bit unhinged at times and a little bit violent, but then he does command respect and loyalty in his subordinates. Then we have the youngest call sibling, Shay. She is also the only daughter in the family. I love how Shay defies the traditional ways of the Greenbones and of the clan, and that resulted in many conflicts for her. I really did love seeing the strong women in this series since there are quite a lot of men in the clan calling the shots and I felt Shay was a really lovely and necessary addition to this entire clan world. 
I do have to mention the side characters as well and there are many that shown throughout the series and they do play a crucial part as readers we could see their points of views and we could see maybe and guess at who might be against our main characters. Really I just loved each and every character and not only in the first book but also with the new characters that are introduced in later books. They all have their own unique situations and distinct personalities that will really keep you reading. I did want to mention some themes that I saw in this book such as loyalty, power, ambition, family, war, a lot of politics as well but I would say one of the strongest themes that came through in this book was family. We see like the complex nature of a family being explored and how that can tie into your motivations as a person and how that can really shape how you are as a person. Given that the Kull clan is really a powerhouse on Kekon and controls honestly like a huge portion of the main capital city, that leaves a lot of pressure and expectations on our main characters and on the children of the Kull family. It gave way to fabulous internal conflicts that I like to see in characters and also we get to see how this plays into external conflicts as well outside of the family. I also want to highlight ambition as one of the main themes. We do see how every character in this book at least has an ounce of ambition, whether that be for their own gain, for power, or to defy expectations placed upon them. I did love discovering the reasoning behind a character's motivation and why they are gunning for power and why they're so ambitious for it. It gave way to a lot of tension and anticipation for what would come next. And with all that being said, I would highly recommend you to pick up the Green World Saga series and I don't think you will be disappointed. These books really do pack a punch and you really don't know what to expect on the next page. It was very addicting to read about this world and I felt it was very fleshed out and of course the characters you will come to love each and every one of them and maybe even love to hate certain characters. Basically I love this series and if you do want to try out an urban fantasy series I would highly recommend you that you check this one out. That's all I want to say for this review video and I really hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for stopping by and I hope you can also give me a huge thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below and also don't forget to ring the notification bell to not miss any future uploads and I'll see you all in my next one. Bye!